so many people happen. in radio just have these insane stories of just having to do so much bullshit to try to get yeah, to the top. Yeah, it doesn't fucking work. Yeah, and it never really works. And out, they used right? to tell us like, you, it, only the internet, only the uh, the internet, the rejects of radio go to the internet. Now the same radio stations that I wanted to work for have been made obsolete by people like you. <laughs> Listen, not even that, because I love radio, and I think it has a chance to save itself. Um, and if they came to me with the contract was right, absolutely, I'll fucking go. And I won't cuss at all. I will mm. read what the fuck they tell me to read. But um, they're reporting either my stories and have to credit me or reporting about me. And I was like, didn't I ask y'all motherfuckers for a job? Mm. You know? Right. Yeah. So at what point do you decide the internet is the way? It just happened. Like my best friend, Jason, I was talking to him one night. And I was like, man, I don't think this is going to work out like I've been trying I got my own show I used to do a health and wellness show in Atlanta uh, on the radio it did okay but it wasn't me you know and I was trying to commercialize something because I couldn't really be myself mm. and so trying to make it all professional I was like this is what they want um that didn't work out lasted a year back to the restaurant industry I go or housewife because my husband never made me work mm. at all he was just like do what you want to do he got it you know just got to be on a budget bitch <laughs> <laughs> right. But he's always been like, you know, very supportive. But um, you know, he was just like, why don't you just get on the internet? And I was like, Jason, they say the rejects get on the internet. If I get on the internet, I'm not gonna be able to get a job. What if somebody calls? He was like, get your ass on the internet. And what year are we talking here? This was tw 2015. Oh, okay. So the internet is fairly developed at this yeah, point. Yeah. Yeah. And Facebook. It was when Facebook was like That's really where you started. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um I remember my husband. You really are country. I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very country and yeah. I'm proud of it. I well, love it. Whenever I meet rappers and they have like a full Facebook backstory of yeah. like, yeah, I was lit on Facebook, but then I got to the max 5,000 followers or yeah, whatever and they, they couldn't grow beyond that. Yeah. <laughs> it was a wrap. So, and I didn't really know anything um, about YouTube like that, you know? So it was like YouTube. I would put my stuff on YouTube and then one day I looked up and I was like, I got followers on YouTube. Like, and then didn't even know that YouTube was automatically monetizing people at the time. Mm. And I had money there and didn't know anything about it. And I'm getting like thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of views. Mm. And so, but Facebook was when it, it took off. And I'll never forget the first video I did on Facebook. I woke, I was drinking wine. I was in like little negligee, little Victoria's Secret, like, you know, house robe. And I commented on Kristen Emilian and Lil Wayne. And I gave her props for fucking dumping him when she found that stripper in his house mm -hmm. and i was like she didn't need to ask her fucking mama she didn't need to call her friends i was like that that's a real bitch right there and so i woke up the next day that shit had two million views really it was right when facebook started integrating the video part portion right. of it and i was like oh my god dilly because i'm thinking my husband at work and you know he's muslim i ain't supposed to be on the internet no damn robe with no <laughs> You know, with no wine. Right. And everybody saw it. He came home. He was like, what the fuck is my people talking? Because he was managing a restaurant in Atlanta. What the hell are they talking about? You, you, what, what the fuck did you put on in there? I was like, nothing. No, no, no. It was already deleted. Right. It was too late. Really, it really took it down. Catch me if you can, bitch. Your first viral success. That sucks. <laughs> Catch it. I didn't know. I had no clue what the fuck I was getting into, Adam. I was like, this is not good. Really? Like, <laughs> yeah. But so then you just kind of start doing it again after that? After It was kind of like that itch. You know, I was just like, so he went to work again. I put up another video. That uh -huh. bitch went viral too. Really? <laughs> yeah. And I deleted that one. Really? I did. I did. Then I just said, well, YouTube is not going viral on YouTube. So that's when I started putting them on YouTube. Trying to keep it as low key work. as possible. Yeah. It's very foreign. But idea. it was an outlet for me because I was like, you know, I I, I follow. I, I, I was I was just talking about this today. Um, back when the blogs used to blog, mm. you know, famous fucking Nicole Bitchy, right. Paris, uh, Perez Hilton, Perez yeah. Hilton, all the motherfuckers. They don't like me, but that's cool. They I all love got them. replaced by YouTubers. Yeah, and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They did, but they don't fucking like me. Like I just like, why y'all don't like me? Y'all inspire me. You know right. what I'm saying? But, like, that's when the blogs was blogging, the sex tapes was out, all that shit. Like, it was just really, and I used to follow that shit, and I'm like, damn. Like, And I used to have, you know, my thoughts and my angles and stuff like that. But, you know, I would discuss it amongst my family, friends. We would gossip and stuff. But to bring it, you know, to the internet the way that I do with my family or my friends, that, sh that shit just kind of happened. Because mm. I always wanted to commercialize myself. I didn't ever want to go in as myself. Being the realest version of yourself yeah, it was like the only thing that was going to capture the people, right? And that's what worked. Right. 
That's what work. And it's like, I don't have to pretend when I get on the internet, well, what you see is what you get. How long did it take you to fully like realize that this was the way and go for it hundred percent? I think when, uh, I don't even really know. I think it was just, I was allowing my viewers that was following me like to, to lead me. Mm. Like I didn't even have a name when I first started. Right. Like I just, it was like Tasha Kibi, you know, it was just, and then I was like, well, just Tasha K. My whole name don't need to be out there. And then, you know, my winos, they named them, they gave me my name because I would drink the wine. They was like, wine with Tasha. Why? And I was just like, unwind with Tasha K. I was like, okay, cool. And then they start calling themselves a wino. So it just developed like that. Like, right. They built that shit. That was one thing I love. I was watching your show that yeah. you did from the hotel room the other day where you were uh, doing the call-ins yeah. with all your fans. Yeah. And, okay, a huge percentage of them basically become, like, mentally uncapable of having a conversation as soon as they're face to face with you. They look like very smart, educated women. And then they're face to face with you. And it's like, like their brain completely malfunctions. But I will give you credit is that I feel like I end up kind of annoyed when that happens. Like with, yeah. with my, like a fan who just like is tripping all over their yeah. words and stuff, but you ride it out so well. Yeah. You, I bring you, them back in. Yeah. yeah. I, I was pretty impressed with yeah. that. I was shocked because like, you know, I never really see my viewers. And when we did a live show mm. um, in Atlanta the, earlier this year and we packed it out, they flew from all over the world, like mm. to come see me. And I'm like, I don't know how this is going to go. Like, you know, it's my first time on stage and then we're doing skits wine gossip you know and it's me giving commentary i hope they love it that was um, your first live that show that was my first live show how like, many people in person i mean it was like i, I want to say like six seven hundred if i'm not mistaken mm. yeah like and we did that in three weeks right yeah and, and i just average comedians sell out 200 people. right i mean that's a crazy feeling too it's just like seeing a whole room full of Man, people listen, that I care about your content that much listen i was telling my sisters i like, pulled a car I'm, I'm i'm bucking this bitch i had got so nervous <laughs> like really? yeah like i i was i was like what if i fuck up like what if the you know the sound don't work we we spent months putting this this program together like all these skits and i don't know if you saw like my bootsy skit and r kelly skit and all that shit mm -hmm. like you know, I was really giving them exactly what I want to bring. You mm. know, they only get to see a portion of me, but there's like so much. And so when I, I'll never forget when Chelsea, shout out to Chelsea. Uh, she's been with me five years. When she went out there on stage and she was like, y'all ready for Tasha K? And I heard them screaming. I was like, oh, wow. Like they're really here. Like right. and when I went out there, it was like a stadium mm. and it was packed. And I was like. Shit, this is my shit. I just fucking rocked it out. And they brought people, which, which was cool. Like, the winos brought people that didn't know me. Mm. And then they wanted to come up and take pictures. Like, right. I've never heard of you. Like, this shit was, like, hilarious. Like... So I mean, it's it was a it was it was a great because when you're just and they're all educated women. I need everybody to check out nojumber.com. We officially started a blog. It has in-depth articles about current events, music, etc. Plus all of our content in terms of podcasts, interviews, etc. And you can get some exclusive new merch if you check out nojumber.com. So make sure you tap in.